welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are looking at our seventh video in our bivariate data analysis series on the coefficient of determination. This follows from our previous video where we learned how to calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient or R. I would assume that you've watched that video and that you fully understand what R is before you jump into understanding the coefficient of determination. And this video is aimed at grade 11 and grade 12 in Australia and in Queensland in the essential and general math syllabuses. In this particular video, our focus firstly is going to be on understanding what the coefficient of determination or the COD is, how to interpret different values, how to show the COD in Microsoft Excel on a scatter plot. So let's firstly jump in and talk about what the coefficient of determination is. And you would recall from the previous video that Pearson's correlation coefficient, or R, measures the degree of association or correlation or relationship between two different variables. So Pearson's correlation coefficient talks about the strength of association as well as the direction. The coefficient of determination is measured as R squared. So once you've found Pearson's correlation coefficient, when you square it, then you've got to have the coefficient of determination. So it's very easy to calculate once you've got the value for R. Now, because R ranged between negative one and positive one, therefore, when you square a negative number or a positive number, you're always going to end up with a positive number. So hence, the coefficient of determination is measured between zero and positive one. Let's have a look at a couple of quick examples. So here I've got a value for R of 0 0.89. So if I square that on my calculator, 0 0.89 times 0 0.89 gives me 0 0.7921. And I would recommend you do this along with me on your calculator. Let's try it with a negative number now. If R is equal to negative 0 0.45, then R squared is going to equal 0 0.2025 because a negative times a negative is a positive. Now, I do need to give you a small caveat here with your calculator. If you simply type in negative 0.45 and then press the squared button, your calculator will get confused because it doesn't know its order of operations the same way that your brain does. And it will return a negative value of negative 0.2025. Now we don't want that because a squared number is always a positive number. Your calculator thinks that what you're doing is negative 0.45 times negative 0.45 times negative one. So it thinks you actually want the final answer to be a negative number. I would recommend that when you're squaring or doing anything with powers on your calculator that you put the number in brackets first and then you'll get the correct answer. So that's the little final thing to remember. The COD is going to be a positive number between zero and positive one. So if you find anything from a different area like negative 100 or positive 100, you know you're on the wrong track. Okay, now R squared is always going to be a smaller number than R unless R is equal to negative one, zero, or one. So let's think about that. If R was equal to negative one, then R squared would be positive one. If R was equal to zero, well zero times zero gives you zero, so R squared will also be zero. And if R was equal to one, then R squared would also be equal to one. So they're the only circumstances where R squared would be the same as R. Now, if you think about other numbers that range between negative one and positive one, for example, let's have a look at r equals 0 0.5, it's a half. Well, if I take a half and I square it, effectively it's a half times a half, which gives me a quarter or 0 0.25. Now a quarter is smaller than a half. So what's gonna happen here is that my um, coefficient of determination will always be a smaller number um, as an absolute value than my original correlation coefficient. So for example, let's say correlation coefficient was 0.8 and you ended up with something bigger than that for R squared, you know you've done the wrong thing. It should always be smaller. Now there's different ways we can interpret R squared. Let's talk about those. So firstly, when we're given the coefficient of determination, we can make some conclusions about the degree of the association. A lot of people think that R squared is all about the strength of the correlation and they're not fully understanding what R squared actually means. So we're gonna talk about that in depth in this video. So if the correlation of determination, the coefficient of determination is close to one, well then you could conclude that the correlation was very strong to begin with, because remember that R squared is always smaller than R. So if it's close to one, then that means R must be very, very close to one. 
And if the coefficient of determination is close to zero, you could conclude that the correlation was weak. But the coefficient of determination is so much more than just degree of association. It does hint towards it, but it's not all that COD is all about. Now, if I know R squared, I can find R by taking the square root. However, the result's going to be inconclusive as to whether my correlation is going to be positive or negative, unless I'm given some more information about the context. So let's have a look at that in an example. Let's say I'm told that R squared is 0.29 and I'm asked to comment on the degree of association. Well, if I took the square root of both sides of the equation, I would find that R was equal to 0.5385, but it could be positive or it could be negative. If you remember, a negative times a negative makes a positive and a positive times a positive makes a positive. So we don't know, just given R squared, whether the original correlation was negative or positive. That's something very important to remember. Sometimes, however, you might be given a context such as height versus weight. And one would generally conclude that as height increases, weight increases as well. So in which case you can conclude that was positive association. The coefficient of determination, as I've just mentioned before, does give us a lot more clues than just correlation. There is a, a bit more depth to it, and it's really important that you understand the depth that COD is offering. What it talks about is the variability in the response variable that is explained by the explanatory variable. Now, this is a very key paragraph. You're going to want to memorize this sentence for your exams, and you're going to want to use this sentence and substitute into the sentence information about your context. So let's talk about what that means. Let's consider this scatter plot. I've got quiz grades versus exam grades. Now R squared in this case is 0 0.479. Now if I take the square root of that, that means my correlation is 0 0.69, which is moderate positive linear correlation. So we know a little bit about the correlation and we know what the value of R squared is. But R squared talks about variability. So let's talk about that. Let's have a look on this particular exam. We've got some quiz results where we got the same result, but we got a different result for the exam. If you have a look at that, we've got the same result of approximately 63% for the quiz, but two very different results for our exam. So why would that be? Well, there's variability in that y-axis. And that's explained by what's going on partly on the x-axis, but there's other factors at play here that's causing a difference there in that response variable. So what we, how we would interpret this, remember I said to memorize the sentence, the value of R squared 0.479, and we need to change that to a percentage, it means that 47.9% of that variability or that changeability in those exam results, that response variable, can be explained by the quiz results and the difference, 100 take away 52.1%, is explained by other factors. Now I'm going to unpack that sentence for you a little bit more, but that's the whole gist of what you want to be able to memorize. So firstly, let's think about what those other factors could be. They could be anything. It could be how much sleep students had, how much stress they experienced and anxiety during exams, how much study they actually undertook, how much help they got each week, maybe with a tutor on their quizzes. So there's lots of other factors that can have a play. And in this case, more than 50% of those results are explained by other factors. But it's not your job to work out what those other factors are. You've only got information about quiz results and exam results. So all you really need to state is that there are other factors at play. So let's talk about um, some, uh, this with a different context. I've got a scientist who's measured some plant heights and they've added some different amounts of fertilizer and he's found that the correlation was negative 0.85. So we need to find the coefficient of determination and interpret it. We actually don't need to see the scatter plot itself. We can interpret information just from this. So firstly, let's find that coefficient of determination. If R is equal to negative 0.85, then I'm going to square that and I've got 0.7225 is my value for the COD. Now I need to convert that to a percentage. So if I take that and multiply it by 100, I'm going to find that R squared, the coefficient of determination, is 72.25%. So now I've found COD. Now I have to interpret it. Remember the sentence I said to memorize that sentence and use it in the context. So 
So let's have a go at doing that. Firstly, let's write that statement. 72.25% of the variability in plant height can be explained by the amount of fertilizer added and 27.75% of the variability in plant height could be explained by other factors. So let's unpack that a little bit. We've got this part here about the variability in plant height. That means on that y-axis, the change, the change that's in those plant heights is um, going to be using the context of the actual question. So don't just write variability in the response variable. You'll lose marks for that. And don't just say variability on the y-axis, even though it is on the y-axis. Think about the context. It's variability in plant height. So relate it back to the context. What are you actually displaying on your y-axis? The next important part is this word explained. Now, notice it doesn't say the word cause. It's not caused by the amount of fertilizer added. So we wanna make sure that when we're talking about bivariate data that we never make conclusions that one thing is causing another. And we've talked about that in previous videos. So be careful about re referencing causation. Always talk about explained, not caused. The next part is by the amount of the fertilizer added. Now notice I didn't say the variability in the x-axis or variability in the explanatory variable. You could say that 72.25% of the variability in plant height can be explained by variability in the amount of fertilizer added. So relate it directly to the question. And 27.75%, now notice I took that away from 100, that's how I got the 27.75. And so it's important that you've got these two percentages in your statement and these are caused by other factors you don't need to suggest what those other factors might be unless you were asked to speculate and you really can't speculate because all you've been given is information about fertilizer so yes sunshine yes the amount of water yes the type of soil these all affect plant heights but you aren't asked to talk about those different contexts you're only asked to explain that it could be by other factors. So like I said before, just memorize this sentence, apply it to your situation, sub simply substitute in wherever you see the two numbers there, the numbers that relate to your uh, value for R squared, and wherever you see plant height and amount of fertilizer, you're just gonna substitute in your Y variable and your X variable. So learn those definitions is the last thought I would have today. I see quite often in exams that students are asked to calculate the coefficient of determination given a data set and they don't do the right thing. They go and calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient. Or I see students taking square roots when they should be squaring. So make sure you know the difference between R and R squared. I also see students when asked to interpret R squared, they jump straight in and they use their definitions for Pearson's correlation coefficient and focus really on that degree of association. So make sure you do know the difference. That's a bit there. Make sure you know if you're given one, how to calculate the other. Do you square it or do you take the square root? It's very important. And you need to know which one you're working with so that you can interpret it correctly. Remember, coefficient of determination is all about the variability. Now in our next video, we're going to find the equation of a trend line using linear regression. We're going to do that algebraically. And in our other upcoming videos, we're going to use a calculator to calculate linear regression, look at residual plots and some complex problem solving linear regression. Now, I did mention at the beginning of this video that we were going to use a Excel spreadsheet to find R squared. So let's quickly jump out there before we finish up. And here's a particular spreadsheet you might be familiar with. We looked at this in a previous video. So I've got this scatter plot of quiz results versus exam results, and we've already calculated the value for R. So I could simply find R squared by taking this number here and um, multiplying it by that number there. That would be one way, and I would find that R squared equals 0.91. Or I could take that number and if I put the little hat one, which is my shift button above the number six, that represents powers. I can square that in that particular way. Now let's say I had the value for R squared and I wanted to work backwards to R. I would simply take this number and I'm going to raise it this time to the power of 0 0.5 because fractional indices or the power of half is the same as the square root. So that takes us back to R. Well, that's all we have time for today in our McClutchy Maths video. Thank you so much for joining us again. And I do hope you'll join me for the next video when we look at linear regression.
do remember to like and subscribe to the channel click that notifications button so you find out about the next video and do follow us on facebook for more tips and tricks have a great day